So today's tomato review is going to be on the Rutgers tomato. So here we have the common Rutgers tomato. Now, a lot of people like this tomato and they say that it's a good slicer tomato, it's good for sauce, it's, it's an all around tomato. Now, this is generally considered a commercial grade tomato, generally. From what I've read about it and what I know about it, this is something like you would find in a supermarket in general. You can buy these seeds in Walmart or you can buy the seeds in Lowe's. They're, they're very common, but this is considered a Rutgers tomato. This is considered a commercial grade seed. And as I'm looking at this, I can kind of see that this is a commercial tomato. If you look closely, and let me zoom you out. And if you look closely, you can see that there's really no wilding in the rind. I do see a little bit of wilding, maybe a little bit right there, maybe part of that. But that could be because I picked them a little bit early because I'm trying to get to my tomatoes before the stink bugs and the birds and everything else has been attacking my tomatoes. So I got to pick them a little early. So this could still be in the ripening stage. So you can't really go by that. But you can see that the, the color in the rind and everything is pretty much uniform. The seeds are attached to the rind. This is a perfect store tomato, a perfect all-around tomato. It's made to be like that. It's It's been, you know, grown and cultivated and engineered that way to grow perfectly and, you know, probably have a long shelf life and things like that. So this is generally considered a commercial grade tomato, but Nevertheless, it's a delicious tomato, and I do like growing these tomatoes probably the most because they're very productive. They're resistant to tomato wilt. They're, they're resistant to most of the other diseases and blights and everything else. It's a pretty good producer. It'll produce, it'll give you anywhere between six tomatoes and say 18 tomatoes, depending on how good of a year it is, the soil, humidity, all that plays part of it. But you can get quite a bit of a, a yield off it at one of those plants if you're not being attacked by birds and squirrels and rats and, and insects and diseases. You know, you'll get a good harvest. If everything's working out good, boom, you're looking at 18 tomatoes, maybe more. And they'll be of a good size too. They're, they're normally about this size. I have gotten them a little bigger than this, but not that much bigger. But somewhere around that size is pretty commonplace for a Rutgers tomato. So, as you can see, the inside of it, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven to eight uh, pockets in there. And generally, I, I like to point those pockets out. I probably haven't mentioned this in my other videos. But generally, I like to point them out because the more pockets you have, the more seeds you got, the more seed gel you have, and the tangier it's going to be. So, this is going to be a very uh, tangy tomato. But I don't know how sweet the rind is going to be. Knowing that this is a commercial grade tomato, uh, it's probably going to be pretty sweet. So the blend is probably going to be just right. But generally, when you see a lot of tomato seed area and less meat and pulp in the middle, it's going to tend to be a little bit more on the tangy side of things. But this is a very common tomato. The, the, the Rutgers tomato is sold as, as like your staple tomato. That you'll find anywhere. You almost don't even want to save seeds for it because you could get seeds anywhere for this. This is really nothing to it. But I save my seeds anyway because I like to climatize my seeds so I get better, better yields every year. Well, let's cut this in half and give it a taste test. Look at that. Tell me that's not gorgeous. That's a, that is a really gorgeous. Um, that's a very gorgeous tomato. This is definitely a tomato that you would want to put out on your picnic table or you're, serve, you're making barbecue and you're making hamburgers and you want that nice slicer tomato that everybody's going to like, you ain't going to go wrong with a Rutgers. So, you know, you get people who are kind of funny with tomatoes. They they don't like certain 
types of tomatoes, certain tastes, and they get like grossed out. So, I mean, if you have one of those people in your family to kind of get really weary on tomatoes, like one type of tomato, I would say grow one plant just for that person, keep it on the side just for them, and you can cut that tomato up for them. And they're going to like the Rutgers because the Rutgers is definitely a, a classic in tomato. So let's give it a bite and see what it tastes like. Okay, so as I suspected, it's going to be a real tangy tomato. So this tomato is pretty tangy. A little more than I would like, actually. But there's different levels of tang. There's tangy where it's kind of tart-like. And then there's tangy where it's sour like a lemon. Okay? This is more going into the sour like a lemon type tangy. It's not tart like a perfect blend. But the sweetness didn't really develop that well this year on this tomato. It's not bad. It's just it didn't really develop good. The tangy is kind of overpowering a little bit. It's not enough sweetness to offset it. Now, it's not a bad tomato. Don't get me wrong. That would actually re go really good on a hamburger. That would, a hamburger with cheese, and you're eating a, a order of french fries, a hamburger and cheese, and uh, you put a little lettuce on that with a little bit of ketchup. That would really, really work. That tangy flavor would really develop great with that combination. But as far as making sauce, I can't say. I don't know if I would appreciate that much tang in my sauce. I would probably have to add sugar to it a little bit to kind of balance it out because I like my sauce to be made a certain way and I don't really prefer very too tangy of a sauce. It can upset your stomach. So I have to put a little sugar in there to balance it out. So this tomato might give you a little bit of problem there, but if you're like a restaurant owner and you serve common foods like hamburgers and tomatoes, and you want to, I mean, hamburgers and hot dogs and you serve that kind of food, this is a, a, a fail-safe tomato, to be honest with you, if you plan on growing your own tomatoes to help supplement some of your, your overhead uh, so you don't have to buy as many and you want to grow your own tomatoes and serve them in your, your restaurant. This would be a choice tomato to use, believe it or not. Though there's many other tomatoes I would probably recommend, but this is a classic tomato you really can't go wrong with. Skins are a little tough this year. They're a little tough. They're really hard to chew. Uh, not liking that too much, but the sea salt definitely corrects any of those problems. Anytime you add salt to a tomato, the salt just binds with that tangy flavor, and it corrects any in balance tasting problems with it but it's really not a bad tomato it's just not going to rank as high for me this year anyway maybe next year it'll come up better the plant will do a little healthier might give me a better taste again a lot of that has to do with your soil so my soil even though i added lime and epsom salt to it my soil was still kind of hurting this year because it was older soil it's tired i should have just spent the money and ordered a truck couple of truckloads of new soil so that might be affecting the flavor a little bit, but even with all of those problems, I'm still going to rank that from a one being the highest. I'm still going to rank that tomato as a number three this year. It's definitely not way up there. I mean, even though my soil is stressed out, I still should have got a pretty good developed, balanced flavored tomato. And this tomato is tending to be a little bit tangier than I like. It's not real tangy. Again, tangy was probably about 40. 45, almost in the 50 range, and the sweetness was maybe 25, maybe 30, but more like 25. It was very neutral in between it, just watery flavor. Had a little bit of a tomato, you know, the, not little, little, but a little better than little on a tomato essence, that flavor of the tomato itself in between the tangy and the sweet. You could taste that tomato, and then that tangy kind of carries that in. It had a pretty good balance, but... Again, it's not going to rank very high with me. I have other tomatoes that are ranking way higher than this. So, not a bad tomato. It's, like I say, it's a, type, a commercial type of tomato. You want to give it a go. I mean, you really can't go wrong. You can get the seeds for $0.10 cents in Walmart and just buy them and grow them out in the back part of your garden. Use really good soil. Add a lot of lime, a lot of Epsom salt. And give it a go. You should be able to develop this tomato good enough for you to use for your your cooking and to serve your guests that come over. All right. So 
That's it for the Rutgers Tomato Review. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys.